What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I know that I have been slacking, but um, it's good to be back. So been working, 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 and thank you guys so much for trusting your days on the water with me from my family to yours. It really, it's been awesome to be out on the river doing what I love and you know, just sharing a passion with fly fishing uh, with new and old anglers alike. So thank you so much. Um, and that, because of this, you know, I couldn't do it without you guys. Um, and I really appreciate you trusting your days on the water with About Trout. Um, and that's why the upload schedule has been super slow. I'm gonna shoot another video after this and have that up about my trip to Lee's Ferry in Arizona with my friend Wyatt. That was a really good time. Got to fish some new water, got to mess around with my trout spay, which I haven't done in like forever. So I do more than just Euronymph. Um, and you'll see more of that uh, throughout the year. Uh, but bear with me. Um, it's been really busy and uh, having the time of my life. So thank you guys so much. So today's video is gonna be about kind of technical layering. It's spring here in the Rockies, which means one day it's snowing, one day it's raining, one day it's 48 mile an hour winds, and then one day it's beautiful and I can continue this sick tan. So uh, what do you wear? What should be in your kit if you're an angler kind of in the Rockies, on the coasts? The weather fluctuates wildly, it's spring fishing. So let's break it down. Um, but this is just going to more be about kind of staples that have been in my, you know, kind of fishing gear closet for the last few years. I'm not really here to point in the direction of it has to be brand X or brand Y, um, but just this type of clothing. So let's just dive right into it. So right off the bat, number one, um, everybody has a buff. What's cool about this buff is it's from 2008. So not to say that I was wearing buffs before they were cool, but I was wearing buffs before they were cool. Um, right now it's been so windy that in the boat I usually wear a full brim hat uh, so I don't get torched. But with the high, high winds, that full brim hat keeps getting knocked off and it drives me insane. So I've just been using a buff to cover my face and it's been working great. I haven't been, haven't been buffed, haven't been uh, rocking the buff for a while, but I'm back into it. It's it's green, which I just moved to a new hood, so I can't really wear this out in my new my new part of town. But um, anyway, stays in the boat. Buff. I think we all know how to wear these. All right, moving on. Um, oh, I just have this out. I wear this a lot in the winter. Um, this is a kafia. Um, it's a headdress from the Middle East. I am Middle Eastern, believe it or not. Don't let these blonde hair, this blonde hair and these blue eyes fool you. Uh, my grandpa immigrated here from Jordan, which is why this is red and white, uh, because the Jordanians and the Saudis, and I think there's a couple other, and some of the other Gulf Arab, some of the Gulf Arabs will wear um, red and white. So I, I use it as a scarf, um, but I do like having a scarf in the winter, but I get a lot of questions on this and that is why I wear it. I'm an ethnic Jordanian. Uh, my family is from Karak, and they are, they're really old and a really big family over there, the Ma'ita tribe. So, hey, maybe I have some long lost relatives out there, holler at me. But anyway, just thought I would bring this up. All right, moving on. So for kind of my the staple piece in my guide collection, this is a sun hoodie from Duck Camp, it's made of bamboo. What I really like about this piece is I can wear it for a couple days without it smelling the opposite of good. Um, pretty basic, there's a lot of companies that make bamboo hoodies, free fly apparel, um, I think Orvis has some stuff like that, Sims, Patagonia, everybody has a sun hoodie and it's great, especially in this windier weather, um, if I, you know, just to put the hood up, you know, so I don't burn my ears, uh, but a sun hoodie is, is big staple i have you'll see there's probably some more camo in here um, i am getting these in different colors i absolutely absolutely love this uh, but if you don't have a sun hoodie highly recommend it even in the winter and early spring you can still get burned um, especially if you're in a boat too the water coming off or the sun's reflection coming off the water can torch you so sun hoodie all right it's spring which means it can be hot it can be cold it can be yes it can be no I like pop music. Anyway, 
Um, kind of my favorite shoulder season piece, and I wear this a lot in the spring, this is a guide hoodie made by Sims. It's a thicker weight, it's water resistant, not waterproof. Um, so wear it in the mornings, if it's really windy, it does a good job of cutting down on the wind. Um, but especially for colder days, I wear this a lot in the spring and the fall. But the Sims Guide hoodie, this, this thing, I, I've really gotten a lot of use out of it. Um, but again, just kind of a thicker weight piece. I can layer under it on the shoulder seasons as well to stay a little bit warmer. Um, but something that I wear a lot, uh, again, there's a lot of variations. You don't have to just go Sims, um, but again, highly recommend it. Okay, so with that Sims piece, there was, you know, the flaws, it's not waterproof. So what happens if it's raining or it's snowing or things like that? And that is where I turn to my Duck Camp uh, breathable jacket. What I love about this jacket is it has pit zips. So if we're kind of in the spring weather where it's all over the place, where it might be, you know, raining and a little bit colder and then the sun comes off and it's, you know, warms up, I can still wear this jacket. It's a breathable material. Um, and again, the pit zips, crucial. So big fan of that. I can layer under it. I really like the cut on it. Um, but this is, you know, us kind of a, just a light jacket. This will stay in my boat, um, especially, you know, if unexpected weather pops up, I can throw it over like a puffy or something like that. But excellent piece of gear. It's super lightweight. It'll fold into its own pocket. And so it's about the size of like a Chipotle burrito. So it just lives in the boat. If there's ever inclement weather or if one of my clients, you know, forgot a jacket, I always have one for them. Uh, but excellent, excellent piece. It has, I got a little brim on it too, uh, but it's, it's duck camp. You can't, you can't really go, can't really go wrong with duck camp. And moving along through this video, you don't have to own like 78 different jackets. And at the end, I'll kind of talk about, you know, if I had one or two pieces, you know, to last you, it just depends how much you're out there. If you're out there, you know, every single month of the year, there's a reason why I have all this. And I didn't just go out and buy all this stuff. This has been accumulated. I don't know. I mean, some of this stuff I've had for a long, for maybe some older than some of the people watching this channel, if you're really young. I've had some of this stuff for years, but you don't have to run out and get all of this stuff. Um, but I will, I will recap some of those core pieces. So you can't fish in Colorado without your puffy jacket. Otherwise you're going to get negative 10 likes on Instagram. So anyway, these are two puffies made by two different companies. This is Patagonia. It's pretty beat up. I mean, this is pretty much a uniform on the front range. And then this is made by Rab. I think they're a British company. Um, this is down. This is not down. I don't really wear this anymore just because it's so beat up and raggedy, but these nano puffs are great. Again, you don't have to go Patagonia. I mean, if you want to look really cool on Instagram, you definitely do, but I'm a dad now, so I don't really have to worry about that stuff. This wrap jacket is down. It's a lot warmer than, um, I think it's, I don't know what's in the, the Patagonia one, but this is a lot warmer. And again, I wear this in the winter, I wear this in the spring, I wear this in the fall. It comes with like a little bag I can bag it up in, but making the switch to down, I'm never going back. I will say with Rab, because it is British, it drives me insane that the zip is on the other side. That's my only beef with this jacket. Um, I put a ton of days on it. I haven't had it for too long, I think maybe like eight months, um, but it's convinced me not to go back to down. So having this style of jacket, whether down, which I would recommend, um, or like a Prima Loft or whatever they use in Patagonia, having a kind of puffy jacket is gonna be a, a, a staple piece um, that you're gonna use three months out of the year and even in the summers on colder mornings. So, you know, it just depends where you live, but I gotta say, down jacket, way to go. All right, rounding everything off in terms of outerwear is a shell. If you don't know what a shell is, it's just an outer layer. It's not insulated if I zip it up, right? So it's waterproof, definitely windproof, and it's breathable. Um, this, Sims doesn't make this anymore. It is Gore-Tex and that's what I love about Gore-Tex is that it's breathable. Let me put, let me put this away. 
What I love about Gore-Tex is it's breathable. So I can layer under it and wear it in the winter. And I can also just throw it over like a t-shirt or like a guide shirt and stay relatively comfortable in the summer if there's like a torrential downpour. That's a jacket that I will wear every month of the year. So depending on how I layer under it is gonna, you know, affect my comfort level. But a shell is definitely a core piece and I recommend everybody own one. I will say this, I loathe wading jackets because I don't like the way that they're cut. I'm not a wrestler from 1980. I don't have to show off my midriff. And also with this dad bod, I don't wanna show off my midriff. I want a longer jacket. I also guide in a boat a lot. And I like that those longer cut jackets, when I sit down, especially if I'm not wearing waders, I'm not gonna get wet because I can sit on the jacket. Um, so something to consider. My beef with that jacket is it does not have pit zips. So like in the summer, you know, it can run a little bit hot, um, but having a Gore-Tex shell or, or a garment like that is a piece that you're gonna wear every month of the year. Maybe not all the time, but you're gonna be really happy uh, when you get caught in some crazy weather and you have that with you. So something to consider, but pit zips, get them long. Uh, you'll wear them a lot more and they're great for multiple applications, especially if you're gonna boat. But that is really it. That is kind of my guiding kit. I wear probably all those pieces throughout the year with the exception of that lighter weight uh, duck camp one. Um, it is a little tighter cut. I can still layer under it, but that is definitely more of like a spring, summer, early fall piece, whereas everything else I generally will wear every day or every month of the year with the exception of obviously the down jacket. Even now it's getting warmer in the mornings and that down's getting pretty hot. Uh, but again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, whatever, eh? Anyway, if you like the video, let me know, give that a thumbs up. And if there's something that I forgot, any questions that you'd like me to expand on, just holler at your boy. Hope you guys are out fishing. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for checking out the videos and I'll see you guys on the next video.